Imagine a society where everything you do, everything you say, and everything you buy is controlled and evaluated by the authorities. It's not science fiction. In China, it's a reality. From now on, citizens' lives are rated and assessed. This is what the Chinese Communist Party calls social credit. The government here says it is trying to purify society by rewarding those who are trustworthy and punishing those who are not. So like the credit score that most Americans get for how they handle their finances, Chinese citizens are now getting social credit scores. The social credit rating system began testing five years ago in approximately 30 Chinese cities. It will be rolled out across the entire country by 2020. So now, the government is tracking citizens' behavior from smoking on a train to jaywalking. If one score drops low enough, they could be denied travel or buying an apartment. When Liu Hu recently tried to book a flight, he was told he was banned from flying because he's on the list of untrustworthy people. Leo was a journalist who was ordered by a court to apologize for a series of tweets he wrote and was then told his apology was insincere. I can't buy property. My child can't go to private school, he says. You feel you're being controlled by the list all the time. And the list is now getting longer, as every Chinese citizen is being assigned a social credit score. Nearly 15 million people have already been prevented from traveling process made possible thanks to the collection of masses of data in all areas of its citizens' private and public life, and it is set to be implemented nationally in 2020. China's growing network of surveillance cameras makes all of this possible. The country already has an estimated 176 million cameras. This knows every person, every bike, every car, every bus. You can tell whether it is an adult, a child, a male or female, it can recognize more than 4,000 vehicles. For China's population, already scrutinized by the country's 170 million surveillance cameras, the social credit system only signals a further decline in freedom. How far into people's daily mundane activities does this go? Well, I think that the government and the people running the plan would like to go as deeply as possible to determine how to allocate benefits and also how to uh, impact and shape their behavior. In this building, the officials of Rongcheng assign a rating to its inhabitants. We were able to sneak inside and film discreetly for a few minutes. Here, the agents collect data provided by the police, courts, and tax office. Each resident is then given a rating from the letter D for not so good citizens to triple A for the best. This also applies to companies. In several big cities in China, including here in Shanghai, the government is even tracking jaywalkers. Cameras record them going through intersections, zero in on their face, and then publicly shame them on nearby video screens. Police in Beijing have been wearing these glasses that can recognize faces linked to the government's national database to help boost arrests. How advanced is this technology? This is a cutting edge. Wu Fei is CEO of a company that makes the glasses. He claims he doesn't know how the government intends to use his technology. I have no idea. R really? Yes. Do, do you trust the government the way they're using your technology? Sorry, I can't answer this. Uh, you can't answer that? Uh, uh, this is the outside our scope of questions. China plans to launch a digital mass surveillance systems are stirring concerns of privacy and government accountability across the globe. He says how the new scoring system truly works is kept secret and could be easily abused by the government. Many countries across the globe are experiencing a massive expansion in government surveillance powers and the threats of global instability, terror and war are leaving increasingly less space for privacy and individual freedom in the post-industrial society reward good citizens and punish bad people. Human rights activist Hu Jia is already blacklisted. Deprived of his passport for 10 years, his movements are limited. He says the social credit system will allow authorities to more easily punish those who do not pledge allegiance to the party. In China, the people who will lose the most credit are those who do not agree with the Communist Party. We can't criticize society or the current system, nor should we say bad things about the highest levels of power and the leader. In fact, this social harmony desired by the party is said to maintain the stability of society, but it only serves to guarantee the monopoly of its power. 
we're already moving very quickly, as you know, into a sort of surveillance society where lots of organizations of all types have lots of data about us. If we unify it all around one identity system, that hurdles us far faster and far further into a surveillance society. So let's switch gears a little bit. So you have something else that's really interesting in um, the newsletter about people in Sweden implanting, uh, putting implants, microchips, right, yes. into them. We've seen something like this here. There was um, there was a company that in they're Wisconsin, yeah. right, so they could get stuff out of the vending machine yeah. with these microchips. So what's happening in Sweden? So basically, in Sweden, over the past couple of years, several thousand people have had these little rice grain-sized microchips put into their hands, which contain information that they can use to, say, check into the gym or get into the office or. Uh -huh pay for train tickets. On the one hand, everyone can appreciate that that's convenient, right? How many times have you been looking for your key fob at the gym or can't remember yeah. your password for something? Um, but I think the bigger question here is, look, as, as the human body itself becomes a technological platform, right, there are big questions we need to consider about what kind of information is put out about us, uh, from us, quite literally, and right. also, <laughs> further down the line, what kind of access do other people or platforms have to that information that is inside us, right? This yeah. is a biotech question, this kind of blurring of the lines between the human body and tech. I mean, it's one thing if you're holding your smartphone and it's sort of emitting data about you. It's another thing if your own hand is doing the same thing. You know, we'll see. This is 3,000 people. This is a, a small experiment. It's been developing over the past several years. Um, but as the information that these microchips contains gets more elaborate and more detailed, uh, people may start to change their mind. Ah, uh, this is not an animation. This isn't like the Fox football robot. It looks like Star Wars to me, though. Yeah, yeah uh, it's a little Terminator-esque, right? Yeah. But this is the Atlas robot, uh, and this thing can now go out for a jog. Look at that backflip. I mean, you've got to be, you've got to be yeah. in pretty good shape if you want to outrun that thing or outflip it. Uh, pretty good. So Boston Dynamics uh, robot can now jog, do, do flips, and open doors. You know what's amazing? Is about it over for us? Are we done as a human race? I'm, I'm pro Goodbye. science. I am pro technology. I just don't. I can't think of the scenario where you need a robot to run or do a backflip or do a backflip. <laughs> Let's just assure that it can. I don't yeah. think that's the the function of the. It's robot. amazing what this robot could do a year ago. It's not even close to what it can do. So only imagine yeah. what it's going to be able to do a year. From this now. is how it starts. Like they learn, they learn. Mm -hmm. We want robots. First, They'll take care of our kids someday. Now, if that, <laughs> if that is a possibility for us, <laughs> the robot nanny. The robot nanny. I'm all in. 
New at six, another futuristic innovation may be taking shape in a secret Silicon Valley site. An Amazon research facility in Sunnyvale reportedly has a secret mission involving robots. To give you an idea of just how sensitive Amazon is about their lab, as we were shooting video on the public sidewalk, teams of security guards said we couldn't point our cameras at their property and called Sunnyvale police, claiming we were trespassing. Cool. Just so you know, he's uh, filming audio and video too. Awesome. After consulting city zoning maps, Sunnyvale PD said it was indeed public property and allowed us to stay. Cool. So, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bloomberg put out a report early this morning titled, Amazon has a top secret plan to build home robots. Citing unnamed sources, they say the project has been dubbed Vesta after the Roman goddess of hearth, home and family. There are a lot of unknowns. Will it talk? What will it look like? And what will it be able to do? Chloe, am I ready on my washing cycle? Remember Chloe from LG, the doomed home robot demo at the Consumer Electronics Show earlier this year? It went silent in front of a huge crowd. Chloe, what's for dinner tonight? It's a glaring example of how the technology is still in its early days. We're becoming aware of how much data we give away without even realizing it. Our habits online can say a lot about our personalities, but when we're out and about, what does our behavior in the real world say about us? Well, in the UK, we're all getting used to the fact that we're being filmed by CCTV a lot of the time, but although a human can tell a lot about a person just by looking at video footage, that is a really hard job for a computer to do. That said, this system is having a pretty good guess at who it's looking at right now. This kind of profiling of humans by computer systems has many uses, from this kind of anonymized retail analysis to other areas that might say more about us as people. One of the more controversial uses for AI is in policing. Peter Lee Police Station in County Durham, the early hours of the morning. The man pictured here in the station's CCTV, let's call him Steve, has been arrested for possession of heroin. Arrest is on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance. Here in Durham, the police are trialling AI software which could help make decisions about suspects being held in custody. Leave your shoes there and we'll just do a quick search. After Steve's been processed, the custody sergeant will enter his details into a system called the Harm Assessment Risk Tool, or HART for short. It's an artificial intelligence tool designed to help custody sergeants make decisions about what to do with a suspect. And this allows us to target the people in terms of our interventions that we've developed to make sure that they don't commit crime in the future. Everybody that I've spoken to who works with the Heart Project is very keen to stress that the information that it provides is advisory only and that a human custody sergeant makes all final decisions. But the use of this technology in general is for some people a cause for concern. This kind of artificial intelligence system in policing relies on big data and that means that people's privacy is at risk and it, it, it risks us moving more towards a surveillance state. But it also risks discrimination um, because patterns that exist in data already risk uh, being perpetuated and repeated and there's very little accountability over it. And it's this data that privacy campaigners find troubling. Experienced data profiles individuals based on their postcode, their household and even down to an individual level. And some of these kind of profile stereotypes include terms like disconnected youth, Asian heritage, dependent greys, and people are sorted into these categories. Now, that's bad enough. When that kind of profiling is being used to make decisions about freedom and justice in the UK, I think we really need to just put the brakes on and say, why are we doing this? It's been revealed that the US National Security Agency collected over 500 million phone records of US citizens last year. That's over triple the number of 2016. And that is despite a new law limiting the spy agency's powers. 
The US Freedom Act bans the bulk collection of phone records and internet metadata, whilst also limiting government data collection to what is, quote, reasonably practicable. It does, however, permit the gathering of phone and text logs when a link to terrorism is proven. The recent increase in records collected comes in stark contrast to the concerns expressed last year by President Donald Trump.